Hi everyone. So this is a both a review for my A day classes on October 8th, as well as an explanation for my B day classes, who I won't see on October 9th. But I am encouraging you to get a jump start on this work. Uh, I know that we don't have class live tomorrow, but uh, it will be crucial for your work next week, the week of October 12th, for you to follow the directions to this work and to complete it ahead of time. Although I will go over it again on Monday during our anchor day. But if you ignore this all weekend long, I can promise you, you're going to feel a bit stressed and this is going to make your week next week a little bit more difficult. So I'm trying to help you out here and I'm just trusting that you're going to follow the directions. I mentioned this yesterday in class that I was going to be posting a video about this. So again, if you were in class on uh, October 8th for my 8A classes, You've already seen some of this material. This is a review of that material. If you were absent, then this will help you out. And again, for my B-Day classes, which would normally meet on October 9th, but we don't have class tomorrow, uh, this is your gateway into seeing what it is that I want you to do over the weekend for the assignments. So let's jump in. So um, obviously the date for this that I'm showing right now says October 8th, but for B-Day folks, it will be altered to October 9th. And um, here is the deal. Today in class, we divided into eight separate groups, depending on which group you were in. That's what article you read. So if you weren't in class, or if you're in my B-Day classes, just pick one. I don't care which one you pick. Uh, just pick whichever one you uh, want to read about, and they're all different topics. So what are we doing with these articles? So we've been talking about informational and persuasive articles so far. And today uh, we are going to begin our project working towards writing our own persuasive article. That'll be a very short little assignment, but it will be a summative. So uh, you can see that I here have my example article, which is an article that I pulled from Newzella regarding climbing Mount Everest. So first you need to pick your article and read it like I did. And you can see that my article is taking a moment to load here, but uh, so I read this article that is related to whether or not people should continue to climb Mount Everest. So uh, looking back here, you can look at my example analysis worksheet, which you need to work, uh, look at to, in order to do the work. So once again, as always, when you see one of my worksheets created in a Google Doc, all you have to do is click File and then click Make a Copy, and then you will have your own copy that you can edit. So. Uh, when you are filling in for your own article, obviously the title of the article will be different and so on and so forth. So I don't think I need to explain that, but in case you're confused. So the title of my article, I have it right here. I showed you this over here in this page. So the central idea, remember that the central idea is sort of like a theme, but theme is for entertainment purpose, uh, stories and novels. Whereas the central idea is for persuasive and informational texts. So the central idea of mine was climbing Mount Everest is dangerous and also causes pollution. So there need to be changes made from the way it is currently done. So notice that is one complete succinct sentence that sums up everything of the author's point in my article that I read for my example. And then this is something a bit new, but it shouldn't be too difficult. So uh, people who care about the environment may be concerned about this because I already mentioned above here that pollution is an issue people who care about human life. So yes, it's dangerous. And then also people who care about tourism because you have to travel to Nepal in order to climb Mount Everest, obviously. Now, uh, I know for example, one of the articles is about football concussions. So you might say doctors are concerned with this. You might say that parents of uh, students who play football would be concerned with that. So those are just some examples of what I mean by target audience and you need to choose three of them. Now, uh, the tone, this is something we covered at the very beginning of class during the warm up today. So if you missed class, you want to pay attention to this. Tone is what the author, is, you can tell what the author feels about his or her subject based on what they're writing. So for instance, going back to last class when we read Ship of Fools about Abby Sunderland and the author who thought very much disapproved of Abby Sunderland's parents letting her to sail around the world. So. I would say the tone of that is very outraged because she was like very outraged that any parent would allow the child into a dangerous situation like that. So as you can see here, I have chosen what my tone is for my article, which is concerned. So you only need one word for a tone. It's just an adjective. 
I use claim site clarify. So my claim is the tone of this article is concerned, period. And then I cite a, uh, a portion of the text right here. Now remember, when you're citing something, you need to pull something directly from the text. You, don't, you shouldn't say something general or vague like, oh, in the beginning of the article, it talked about this. No, I want you to show me where you read what you're talking about in the article. And a lot of people seem to have some trouble with that on the short answer response questions from last week. That's why I'm being so uh, meticulous with explaining how to do this correctly. Now you'll also note that I clarify my statement thereafter. So moving on to the bottom, do you agree or disagree? And again, I use claim site clarify in order to respond to that final question there. Very simple, it, there's no wrong answer. Do you agree with the article you read or do you disagree? And that's it. So again, going back to our classwork, you can see that you have a variety of articles to choose from. We worked in groups in class, but if you were absent for whatever reason, or if you are in my B-Day classes, you can select whatever article you'd like. Now let's talk about how that relates to the homework. And the homework is very, very similar to the classwork. And I can see some people already submitted, good job. So let's look at my example here. So what you are being asked to do for the homework is this. So remember, I read my article about uh, Mount Everest and climbers on Mount Everest. So I Googled Mount Everest news article. That's, all, that's how simple it is. So if you have the football concussion one, again, that might be a good way to go, it's just football concussion news article. But I'm also gonna give you a couple of sources here in just a moment in case you're still having trouble. So I read this article that is related to my original article. And if you look at this right here, this is your homework. So again, file, make a copy, and then you wanna put your article and the link where you found it. I did the central idea again. I did the target audience again, and then the very bottom, so this is the heart of the matter. Uh, and it's okay if the answer to this question is no. Is this a credible source? And I'm gonna do, uh, go through a presentation in just a moment that I didn't have time for actually in class uh, about how you can tell if something is biased or if it's a very credible source to uh, cite information from. So again, very similar to the classwork, but slightly different. So, uh, let me pull up that presentation that I was just mentioning and we can take a look at that. So you'll see that I linked this article research bank. So let's say you're having trouble finding articles related to the, for the homework, trying to find a related news article that goes along with the article you already read. Here are some sources. Now you'll note some of these sources aren't necessarily the best. I did that on purpose for you to analyze and tell me why isn't this source very good. So for instance, we all probably know that Wikipedia isn't necessarily a reliable source because of the fact that anybody can alter it at any given time. So uh, let's look at this presentation. Um, so uh, looking at different types of media bias, this could be very helpful for you. And uh, talking about ways in which media tends to spin things. So for instance, the Huffington Post was another one of these sources under here. And it, the Huffington Post tends to have a very liberal bias when they write about things. So although some of the things they're telling you have nuggets of truth in them, they definitely have a spin to them, which is what is uh, discussed here. So again, going down through uh, these different uh, particular patterns, unsubstantiated claims. So if someone says something that seems pretty outrageous, I always advise people, I do the same thing in my real life. If I see something that I don't quite believe, I Google it because then if I can find it in more than one reputable source, then I can believe that it's probably true. So this is a good uh, site for telling you about media bias. I'm not going to bore you by going through every single one. And uh, if you'll just give me a moment, I need to pull up my other presentation related to how to uh, cope with finding a reliable source. So just give me one moment here and uh, we'll go through that.
So this presentation, I did not make myself. I, it was actually sent to me. Uh, but it has some very good information about credible sources. And now I'm not going, there are lots of text on each slide. I'm not going to read every single slide, every single word, but I do want to highlight some of the important things. So remember that a fact is something that can be proven true or false. It's not an opinion. So I used the example the other day in class, you should wear a jacket today versus maybe you say, I shouldn't have to wear a jacket today. That's our opinions. That's different, right? So, um, Persuasive pieces are going to make use of this. And we talked about that last time on the classwork homework with regard to Abby Sunderland. The, the author's opinion is backed up by certain facts. So you can agree or disagree with the opinion, but some of those facts are irrefutable. Um, and as this slide says here, if one doesn't necessarily check out, that doesn't automatically mean that it's fake. You kind of have to dig a little bit deeper though. So. First thing, and some of you have already told me that you know this uh, from class and our conversations. Again, there's a lot of text on this slide, but to highlight the big thing, uh, reputable domains such as .gov or .net or .org. Now, I caution .com because anybody can really create a .com, and you can see over there the list of questionable domains. But uh, chances are .com can also be trustworthy as long as you can substantiate it. So, uh, and I just talked about that just a moment ago. So the about us section. So again, uh, making sure that you check out what kind of uh, perspective the website is trying to push across to you, because they may very well may have an agenda. What if it's something that's funded, uh, they have a study on their webpage that was funded by someone who has something to gain. So for instance, if you're a helmet maker for football, going back to our football concussion uh, example, what if it was a website that was funded by money from like the helmet makers who want to sell more helmets for concussions? So think about that kind of thing when you're reading it. Now, uh, the quotes, making sure that you have something that, you, again, that I always Google things. So again, when something, as it says over here on the right-hand side, where it says sources say, usually I will Google that quote, or if it's from a certain doctor or something, I will Google that person's name in order to find out more about them. And that's just how easy it is. It can be easy to be tricked, but it can also be easy to substantiate this information. And as it says here, we've been talking about getting a second opinion. If you can find something on the internet more than once from sites that all seem reputable, then chances are it's true. That doesn't necessarily mean it's absolutely true, but you need to be able to use good judgment. Oh, and as it says, this is a great tip that I do all the time. Directly paste the quote or statement into Google or another search engine and see what happens. So, um, and the comment space. So, like it or not, today on the internet, there are tons of political ads and political sites that have tons of nasty arguments, lots of foul language, lots of offensive things going on. So you got to be careful about what you delve into. But most websites like something like the New York Times, for instance, which is considered to be a very reputable source, the New York Times monitors their comments and doesn't let things get out of control. So people can disagree, but it has to be a, a conversation. Whereas some websites, you might see people calling each other foul names or even some things that aren't very appropriate for school. And reverse image search. Now, I don't have a ton of experience using this website, uh, but I just found out about it from having read uh, this presentation before I showed it to you all. But uh, this 10i reverse image search is actually pretty neat. And sometimes, you know, things are uh, slanted a certain way when you read an article. So they may put an image that doesn't necessarily correspond with what it is that they're reporting. There's been things uh, in the very recent past with this being done politically, where someone posted a picture of riots. And I believe it was a riot from the Ukraine, not a riot in the United States, but they were talking about riots in the United States while using this video clip. So just be aware of that. And um, again, these are some good questions to ask yourself. So again, is the domain name reflective of the company it represents? Does it have a reputable about us section? Are there quotes that you can uh, find that are relevant to the story? And so on and so forth. And this is the uh, other website that I showed you earlier uh, before I started the presentation. So anyhow, these are all important and we didn't have time to talk about it in class, but I wanted to make sure I explained that because if you're having trouble with the last question of the homework, uh, the last question of the homework asks you, is this a credible source and how do you know? You can use that as a basis for how you know whether or not it is a very good web source.
So uh, hopefully all of you are able to complete this with no problem. It seemed like those of you in class today were working uh, side by side very well in your groups and it seemed like everybody understood the assignment. So it's just a matter of getting it done. I know it probably takes a little while to read the article first, but if you're having any questions, please email me and please come prepared to class next week because I cannot stress enough, you will be behind if you do not have this work done. So have a great day and I will see you next week.